Okay, let's uh, check whether it's recording, whether there is connection. It's not so smooth for me now, but it's gonna get better as I practice. Um, hey guys, thanks for being with me, and today we are going to continue where we stopped uh, yesterday. So we were implementing Stripe subscriptions, and uh, we are going to implement Stripe lifetime subscriptions. And a lifetime subscription is basically a one-time payment. But... Uh, but uh, to a like subscription service. So uh, let's see what we did previously. Previously, when uh, you log into the app, you are assigned a Stripe customer ID, and you can uh, see free posts that are not premium. And you could go to pricing, you could select uh, one of the existing uh, plans and subscribe to uh, a plan. So let's select the yellow plan, for example. It redirects us to the Stripe checkout. You see, I can pay with card or I can also pay with PayPal. So you don't need to have a separate PayPal integration. You can just integrate PayPal with the Stripe. And this is an answer to one of the questions I was given in the previous video uh, about uh, integrating PayPal API. You might not need to integrate PayPal API if you integrate a Stripe API. So uh, we'll put in the Stripe default uh, card that usually gives uh, a successful payment some kind of name and I click subscribe uh, in the background you see there are web hooks that have been sent from stripe into our application and you see we have post requests to our slash stripe slash web hooks and uh, you see I was redirected in the meantime to the present page with a success flash and uh, here you see my plan is yearly my status is active uh, the plan ends in uh, a year from now so september 2024 and uh, i am active this true means that uh, my account is active if i go to application html you see it is customer current user docked active and active means that uh, the subscription end date is uh, more than the uh, uh, current time so let's add the one-time payments, uh, but for the subscription service. And uh, how can we do it? Well, first of all, we're going to go to the Stripe dashboard and add an additional price. Let's uh, see. Here, for example, I went to the Stripe dashboard. I go to products. Here I have uh, my premium plan product that has uh, this $19 per month and $190 per year prices. And I'm going to add another price. Let's go and add another price. I will select standard pricing i will select a currency let's make it i know one thousand uh, dollars as lifetime access and uh, i'm going to select not recurring but one time now you could select uh, you could think that it is possible to select recurring but i know make it like once uh, 500 years or something uh, but uh, you cannot select more than one year as a recurrent period in Stripe. So really it would be a one-time payment that would uh, give you unlimited access to your app and you would just need to configure it in your app itself. So I'm selecting a one-time payment of $1,000 uh, in this case. I will add a lookup key, let's name it lifetime. And we can add some kind of uh, description like uh, lifetime access to our content. Let's add this price, and uh, here we have it. And now we want to display this price in our pricing here. So I'm going to go to our checkout controller. We have pricing, and now we are displaying the prices with lookup keys monthly and yearly, and we are also going to display the lifetime price. So uh, again, how does uh, the app, how does Stripe know that these are the names? Because we added these as the lookup keys. So if I go back to edit price, additional options, you see, uh, yeah, I cannot uh, see the lookup key. It is empty. Uh, let's see if we see a lookup key for another price. Yeah, you see it is always set as empty, but uh, yeah, if I added something, it would override. Yeah, quite interesting. But anyway, we have added lifetime as uh, the lookup key for this price. And uh, if I refresh now, okay, we have this undefined method interval because uh, interval is uh, present only on recurrent prices. So let's go to our price in HTML and uh, see if the price has the recurrent attribute, we are going to display the interval. Okay, so here, here you see it is recurrent 
month, recurring year, and not recurring. And we can uh, also display the type of price. So is it a, a recurring uh, bill that you have to play, pay or is it a one-time payment? So we can display price uh, dot uh, type, I think. And here you see this is recurring, recurring, and this is a one-time payment. So you see it is kind of a default attribute on Stripe uh, uh, prices. Okay, and now let's try clicking this uh, subscribe on this uh, one-time uh, $1,000 payment. I will click subscribe. And you see we get this error. You must provide at least one recurring price in subscription. Um, why does it say so? Because if we go to the checkout controller, here we see the mode is set to subscription. But there are different modes for this uh, Stripe checkout. If you look at that Stripe API, in the checkout we can have payment, setup, or subscription. So setup is when the user can just in, input his uh, credit card details. Subscription is where we select yearly or monthly payment. And uh, in this case, we are doing a one-time payment, and it's going to be just a payment. So here we need to conditionally have either subscription mode or uh, payment mode. And uh, let's... Uh, add this uh, method here so private def uh, mode uh, for the specific price and we are going to add some kind of uh, hash of modes uh, so we are going to have uh, recurring would be subscription and one time would be payment. And here I would say uh, modes for price dot uh, type. So uh, if the price type, let's just go back, is one time, then it's going to be payment. And if it is recurring, the mode will be set to subscription. And we need to add this mode uh, here instead of uh, hard code and subscription we are going to set it to be either subscription or payment okay I'll refresh and try once again I click on uh, subscribe to the premium plan okay uh, I get some error why is it so because I don't have this uh, price uh, defined so I need to uh, look up the price object, I think. Uh, either look up the price object or also have the price mode in the params. Let's uh, actually look up the price object. We would say stripe price retrieve params price ID and here we would have a mode for price. And here just the price uh, ID. Let's try once again. I will uh, go back. And here it works. So you see we have this uh, one-time payment that we can do. You see we previously I already added my uh, code, so it is uh, already here and I can just uh, do this one-time payment. Let's uh, try doing it and we will also look at what happens in the uh, console. Here we have these webhooks uh, that flow in. So what webhooks will flow in when uh, we make this uh, one-time payment? I click pay. And you see we have charge succeeded, payment intent succeeded, payment intent created, and checkout session completed. So you see we have success, but uh, really it uh, still says that we are on the yellow plan and that it ends in one year from now. So we need to process our webhooks in a different way in case uh, the user is uh, trying to make this one-time payment and we know that the user is making this one-time lifetime payment. So how can we do this? Well, we're going to... Uh, process this uh, webhooks and I think the simplest one of them to process would be checkout session completed so I will go to our webhooks uh, controller and here you see we have uh, a webhook to add the customer ID to the user when the customer is created on stripe then the webhooks to handle the subscriptions and we're going to have a separate webhook for uh, checkout session completed and here we're going to have uh, some logic so let's uh, 
Let's try to put a debugger here and see what we've got. I will uh, make one more payment and enter the debugger in the console. So let's pay once again. And uh, it should hit the debugger. Yes, here it hit the debugger. So let's have a look at our uh, object. What is the object? It is event.data.object. And it is a Stripe checkout session. So we can say uh, session equals event.data.object. And we can get some data from this. So uh, uh, how can we be sure that this is uh, a one-time payment and that it has been successful? You see we have this payment status equals paid. And uh, we also have uh, the mode payment. Otherwise, the mode would be subscription. So we can say uh, session.mode and we expect it to be payment and uh, session.payment uh, status just in case we will double check that it is uh, paid. So we are going to continue only if uh, these uh, two are true. So if uh, session mode equals payment and if the payment status has been paid, then we're going to uh, try to find the user and we're going to try to see the price that has been paid and what product was purchased. So uh, what else do we have that uh, there is the customer. So we're going to find the user by this customer ID in a similar way we did here. So we will say user equals uh, session.customer. So this exists. And we've got the user. But in this checkout session completed, we don't have uh, a lot of information about the uh, thing that uh, we paid for, that the user paid for. So we'll need to, uh, for example, make an additional API call to uh, get the line items, the elements that were bought in this uh, checkout session. So um, we would say something like session with uh, line items equals uh, stripe checkout session retrieve this session uh, and expand line items so let's see if this works okay it looks like yeah here we have the session with line items and we can get dot line items here we have this line item let's say dot data dot uh, uh, okay here we see the price that has been paid and uh, we can have a look at the price data dot price data dot first dot price and here we have the price that has been paid and we see that the lookup key was lifetime so dot lookup key okay here we see that uh, uh, the user has subscribed to the lifetime plan so uh, uh, we can say plan equals session with line items, line items data first, price lookup key. And this would give us something like uh, a lifetime val value if everything works uh, uh, correctly. And we would uh, update the user, user update uh, plan would be this plan. So potentially lifetime. And uh, let's uh, see if this uh, works. I will continue. I'll refresh this. And uh, I will try once again. Now, did I switch the debugger off? No, I did not. I will uh, try to purchase the premium plan. Pay. And you see, now we have this lifetime uh, uh, plan active. Okay, now let's try doing this on uh, a new user. So I will log out, create a new account. And uh, now I'm going to go to pricing. I'm going to click on subscribe. Add a code.
and the base. And you see we have lifetime plan on, but uh, it is uh, set to false, the active status. So if we go to our pose, we still don't see the premium pose. So we'll need to have an additional uh, uh, way to check if uh, the user is active with a lifetime plan. So we can go back to our user model and uh, say that the user is active if the plan equals lifetime. So let's say return true if plan equals lifetime and you see now it is set to true and we see the premium post and we can access it so uh, this uh, is about it uh, now we can allow users to uh, subscribe to a monthly plan or a yearly plan or just make a one-time purchase and uh, it reminds me of the website uh, once.com i guess yeah, this one. So uh, it is a base camp uh, of the Seven Signals website, and it uh, advocates for not paying subscriptions for software, but uh, paying one time. And uh, as I understand, soon base camp is supposed to release uh, uh, some kind of uh, way to not have a subscription to base camp or to hey email, but to pay just once uh, for it. So. This way we can allow customers to pay just once for our digital products. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. Thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.